Hey there, I'm Tony with Fill Piece and I'm going to show you how to use the Fill Piece Induct Hot Wire Anemometer SCA2 to measure CFM in the duct. Now in our industry, airflow is king and it's very important to check proper airflow in order to correctly commission a system. Now, there are more than one ways in which you can check airflow. You can use static pressures and the, and the blower fan tables. You can use a flow hood. But in this training video, I'm gonna show you how to use the STA2 to measure the CFM in the duct. The Philpiece STA2 is an induct hot wire anemometer. So an anemometer is a tool that measures air velocity. And the STA2 has an anemometer sensor, which is the hot wire, and another sensor to measure temperature. Okay. Now, in order to calculate and measure CFM with the STA2, we're going to perform a process called the duct traverse, which basically means we're going to take a bunch of air velocity measurements in the, in the cross section of a duct, average those together, and then, and then allow the tool to perform the math to convert that air velocity into a CFM volume. Now, where you perform a traverse is very important. Now, in an ideal situation, I would not perform a traverse right here for a couple of reasons. One, I'm too close to the air handler, and also on the other side, I'm too close to elbows and bends or obstructions in the duct. Ideally, you want to have at least two to three duct diameters width away from the air handler and any bends or elbows or obstructions in the duct to get a more accurate reading, okay? Now, after that, uh, how many holes you drill into your duct and where you position, position those holes is important. So for a duct that is less than 30 inches, uh, industry says that we need five holes. Any duct from 30 to 60 inches, you need six holes, okay? So we have a 20 and a quarter inch width duct right here, so I have five holes. Now, where you measure these out is important. So based on industry tables, uh, you take the width of your duct, which in this case is 20 and a quarter inches, and your first hole is drilled at 7.4% of that width. Your next hole is 28.8%. Your third hole is halfway 50%. Your fourth hole is 71.2%. And your last hole is drilled at 92.6% of the width of this duct. Now, after I did a bunch of math, that came out to my first hole being one and a half inches um, starting point. My next hole is at five and three quarters inches, and then 10 and one eighth inches, 14 and a half inches, and basically 18 and three quarter inches. Now, it's very important that when you're done with your test, make sure to cap or use duct tape to cover up the holes and not leave them there. One pro tip, if you plan on doing a reshoot on a training video, do not use mastic tape to cover up your holes. You'll get it in a few seconds. Now that we have our holes correctly positioned in the duct, let's set up the STA2. First, we power it on. It goes through a quick warm up period, about five seconds for this hot wire sensor to warm up. And once that's on, on the display, we begin to see feet per minute at the top, temperature in the bottom. I can use the arrow buttons to toggle between CFM on top, temperature on the bottom, or CFM on top and feet per minute on the bottom, okay? Now, in, in order to perform and measure CFM, we have to set the duct size. So we press the duct button here. Now from here, we choose between height and width or, or it, if we already know the free area of the duct, we can just enter in free area. We're gonna put in the height and width for this one. We press enter. Now this is a rectangular duct, but I could also perform for a circle duct by toggling with the arrow buttons. Press enter for rectangular. Now this duct size is 20 and a quarter inches by 13 and a quarter. So we have 20 and a quarter. You can use the arrow buttons to dial it in, press enter. And 13 and a quarter, again, use the arrow buttons to dial it in and now our duct size is set and we're ready to start a timed average of the CFM. So we press the hold average button for a second to get into record mode. Now from here we can choose between a timed recording or a point recording by pressing the arrow button. Now the difference is a time recording will just take the average of the airspeed for the amount of time that the sensor was in the duct. The point will take the average of several individual points that we take inside the duct, okay? So for this, we're gonna use a timed measurement, press enter, and we see the feet per minute on the top, and this is the timer that's gonna start when we start uh, timing and taking the measurements. I can toggle between CFM, 
feet per minute temperature on the top here. Now that we have the STA2 set up for the CFM test, we take our telescoping wand, pull it out some, and in the case we have two sensors to be able to sample our measurements, and on the side of the wand there's a flat, there's flat sides and round sides. It's important that you ensure that the flat sides are up and down to make sure that the, that the airflow is going inside of these holes and not hitting the side of the wall here, okay? So, once you have your telescopy wand out, we're gonna to begin to sample uh, the airflow in the duct by inserting our wand into the first hole, bump it up against the end, and we're ready to start our timed average. So, now that we have our test set up, I'm gonna press the enter button, and the timer starts, and I start to smoothly pull out my telescoping wand until I feel the sensor case with my fingers and I press enter to stop it. Now that took me 10 seconds, so what I wanna to try to do is make each leg a 10 second sample. So I bumped up against the back on hole number two, I press enter and I start pulling this out at a uniform pace. Once I begin to feel the sensor cap with my fingers, I can stop it, enter, Perform the same thing for the third hole, bump it up there, enter. Again, you don't have to be perfect, but just try to get each leg kind of the same time. All right, pause it on three, insert into our fourth hole, enter, start pulling it back. Now it's sampling all of the airflow during the time of that. There, now for my last one, stick it in, press enter, and kind of uniformly pull this out. And there, enter. Now, once you finish with all five legs, you've sampled all the measurements you need for the tool to perform the calculation for you. Now that we've sampled all of our measurements, back on the display, we can see that our total time test went for 50 seconds, and that's pretty good because I had five holes that I was trying to do 10 seconds per hole, so it came out pretty good. So now we're ready to calculate the average. So I press the average button on the tool, and it shows me that my average CFM of my time test was 694 CFM, so just under 700 CFM. Now this is a two and a half ton unit, so I'm probably on the low end to that. So now I can look into making adjustments to get it properly set, but you wanna make sure that you compare it to the manufacturer's specification on the proper amount of CFM that you need. And then once you have the airflow set, you can confidently look and set correctly the refrigerant charge. Now to use the point average method of the SCA2 to calculate an average airflow, we position our holes in the same way we did for the time average, the five holes for less than 30 inches at this same distance. Now the difference is, instead of using time to sample the measurements within each hole, we have to do six different points that are specified by industry standards on how deep each of those points have to be in each of the holes. So, based on industry standards, the first point where we take the measurement, oh, actually before that, we enter the average mode and we keep it on the dot and we press enter there. So now we're in point average. And we use the ruler on the side of the probe to be able to measure our depths. Now the inner diameter of this duct this way taking into account the internal insulation is 11 and 3 quarters inches, or inches. And based on industry standards, my first sample has to be 6.1% of that length back from the back, and then 23.5%, and then 43.9%, and then 56.3%, 76.5%, and 93.9% away. Now, after we've done all that math based on that length, 11.75, 6.1% of that is three quarters. So I note that I'm starting at about 11 inches here on the ruler. So I move it out three quarters of an inch and then I lock it in and press enter for that point. 
and then I move it two more inches for my next spot and I lock that in and then I move it two and a half inches from that spot enter one and a half inches from there enter two and a half inches from that point there and my last one is two inches from that okay then I lock it in there now I have my six points for that one leg and I perform the exact same thing on each pole here one more there so now I've completed all 30 samples that's six samples per hole. And now we go back to the SDA2 to perform the average calculation. So back at the SDA2, I see that I have my 30 uh, points of measurements. Remember, five measurements or six measurements per five holes is 30 points. Now to get my average, I press the average button. And I see that my average CFM is 735. So if you're paying close attention, you would have noticed that our measured CFM from the point average to the time average was about 5% off. It's not that much, but that's mainly attributed to turbulent air in the duct right here, because like I mentioned, this is not the ideal location to perform this test. So if you want to perform the duct traverse by the book, use the point average. Measure out all of your sampling points to perform your test. However, if math is not your thing, the SDA2 also allows you to use the time average to measure the CFM in the duct. And that's how you measure an average CFM airflow in duct with the Philpiece SDA2. Now for more information, go to our website at philpiece.com and follow us on social media at Philpiece Products. And as always, stay tuned for more videos.